Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to sketch this makeshift market scene straight to ink without using any pencils. So if you want to practice or challenge yourself, you can download the reference photo in the video description below. Let me show you the completed sketch that I drew the other day while I was on location. So I drew the pen and ink sketch on location but the colors were added on at home because after I finished drawing the lines it was almost going to rain so I had to rush back home. So this is the completed sketch. Let's analyze this scene first. So this photo was taken with a wide angle lens so the diagonal lines they are quite dramatic. The first thing I would do when I see a scene like this is to find a vanishing point so I will look at where the diagonal lines are leading to. So in this case the diagonal lines are leading to um, this area here. So when I draw later on I will keep in my mind the location of the vanishing point that's very important and the focus of this sketch is on this makeshift market so it's a wide scene and the first thing I want to draw is to actually draw this um, vertical line here because um, I basically want to try and fit this whole scene onto the paper if I draw this too high or too tall Everything else is going to be much longer by proportion. So this horizontal line will be much longer and it will not be able to fit onto the page. So this, uh, to get the height of this right on the paper, it's very important. And the vanishing point, that's very important. This is not going to be a complete sketch. I just want to show you how I create the structure of the sketch before filling in the details. So I've just drawn a rectangle with this light blue pencil so that I can fit my sketch. Okay, the first first most important thing to do is to draw that vertical line and get the height right. The height of that structure, it's, I would say it's one unit and the width of the structure is about two units and the width is actually, I mean the line here actually tilts down like this slightly and the makeshift table is like this the height of the buckets here they start around here about one third of the height here so when I'm drawing I'm always comparing this is the bottom of the bucket. Make sure you curve the bottom because of perspective. There are some boxes here that are used to stack the tables and the vegetables are on top. I will draw all the little details later on. The details are not that important. The main structure is more important. So when I'm drawing, I'm always trying to um, connect the lines. So for example here, this part here, there is very strong for shortening. So to draw this diagonal line, it's going to be very challenging. So what I do is I will look at the reference photo and see where the line is supposed to end. And I will keep this point in mind. And when I am actually drawing, I'm actually just joining the points together. So I find it easier to draw um, as in to join the lines know where the lines are going to start and where it's going to end and then when you it's so much easier to just join the lines so this is the structure I'm going to use black ink to draw the vegetable store and red ink to draw the building so that you guys can see the sketch a bit more clearly and all these boxes that you that I am drawing right now, I'm actually just scribbling, just drawing rectangles. They don't have any shapes or perspective, just to create some thick details. Okay, um, let's draw the building that this vegetable store is in. 
there is a rectangle here so this is the background the background is lit by sunlight and the background actually intersects this goes behind this door here and this is the top of that opening goes to the right side and comes down like this and then goes to this side here there is a vanishing point that is somewhere around let me measure again to find out where the, the vanishing point is the vanishing point is actually somewhere here to the left side of the buckets so now with the vanishing point i can draw the diagonal lines of the building so i can draw this diagonal line that points to the vanishing point like this there's this diagonal line that points here and one uh, all right this vanishing point is actually not on the on this horizontal line it's actually slightly higher and when i draw this line here this line will be almost horizontal but it's not horizontal if i had placed the vanishing point on this horizontal line this line will be horizontal which is not the case if you take a look at the photograph and this point this vanishing point also happens to be on the horizon line which i am going to draw with this dotted line dotted red line the horizon line is very important in this case here um, the horizon line is where is also my eye level so for all the people in the scene all their eye levels will be on the horizon line so for example with this shopper here i can draw the head here the eyes here and the body will be here i can draw another shopper in the far background i may not know where that customer is in the background but as long as the head is overlapping the horizon line i can draw a body for that and once i know the size of the body i will be able to know the length of the legs okay let's continue with the structure of the building there are some pillars like huge pillars or uh, one it's one is right here um, when i there are actually several pillars so when drawing it may be good to draw pillars that are in the center try to get the placement right and then again draw the pillar between these two pillars so it may be tempting to draw from left to right or from right to left but i find that sometimes uh, if you don't get your measurement right then um, everything that you draw is going to the mistakes will compound later on so i find it easier to divide it draw the center and then draw another pillar here and then draw the center here again and then here just keep dividing it if you want it to be accurate there are some um, i'm not sure what these are called blind not blinds uh, something to shield from the rain and this will follow the will go to the vanishing point as well okay so this is the pillar and the top of the pillar this line here it's not horizontal it's tilted slightly down like this because there is a vanishing point at the far right outside of the photo so if you want to draw um, this line make sure it's not horizontal it may be horizontal if you are drawing on location um, but based on this photo it's not horizontal and once again um, there are several um, of this horizontal section beams on the ceiling so once again i can draw the center beam here and then divide draw the beams within 
I find it easier that way. Okay, so now the structure of this building is almost, um, I mean, the main structure is almost done. This is where I would probably add in some details to tell me where I am, basically to help me understand where I am because there are so many lines here. So sometimes uh, in this case, I can add some trees here, some leaves here to tell me that this area here, it's the trees and this is actually the pillar. And for the pillar here, sometimes I may actually just draw some like lines to let me know that this is actually a flat surface here i can put some trees here i can put some flat surface because when there are too many lines like this it can be it's very easy to get lost while you are drawing okay so let's continue with the vegetable store um, remember earlier i said the all the heads, all the eyes will be at the horizon line. That applies only to people who are as tall as me. So for example, if the vegetable seller is uh, shorter than me, then the head will not be on the horizon line. I mean, the eye level will not be on the horizon line. The eye level will be slightly lower. In this case, the vegetable seller is actually slightly shorter than me. She is also wearing a mask there are a lot of vegetables on the table so for all those vegetables i'm just going to use little dots like this now there are some white styrofoam boxes on the other side of the table so for those white styrofoam boxes i may want to draw with thinner lines just to create the illusion that um, the table that is further away is smaller or further away. So now I can just uh, keep adding the details. And if there are any customers in the background, remember to draw them with their eye levels intersecting the horizon line. So you can draw as many uh, people as you want. Just make sure that the eye levels coincide with the horizon line. For this particular sketch, I will try to draw from the left side to the right side because the focal point is right here. And if I actually do run out of space on the right side, then uh, it's okay to leave the sketch. I mean, leave that place out uh, white or leave that place, leave that area empty because that's not the main area that I want to draw. The main area is this. So draw the main area uh, first. Now there are a lot of, for this particular sketch, there are a lot of little details. So sometimes you, you may want to use thick and thin lines to help you differentiate between the details. So for example, with the structure, maybe you can draw with thick lines. But for the little details like the vegetables, uh, you can draw with thinner lines. But for the trays, for the boxes that are used to put the vegetables, you can draw them with thicker lines. Small details, you can draw with thin lines. Bigger details, you can draw with thicker lines. Okay, there are some uh, buildings in the background here as well. So let me just draw those uh, buildings. I'm going to use thin lines to draw those buildings. Now, the diagonal lines of those buildings are also affected by the vanishing point here because this building is actually parallel to the buildings across the street. And the roof line is here. It's very close to this uh, metal structure here. So when I draw, I need to make sure that this line will point to the vanishing point. And there is another, the top of the roof will be here. It will be like this. And these are the diagonal lines on top of the diagonal lines. 
I can draw some windows. There are some more buildings in the background. These are the trees. The trees will overlap. The trees will overlap this tall residential block and this shorter buildings here, they will overlap the trees that are behind. And there happens to be another residential block here which overlaps these shorter buildings in the background. So when you have all these overlapping elements, uh, it's great because it's going to create the sense of um, depth because there are overlapping elements. And after you have drawn all those uh, little details, you can add the doors, the windows, those tiny details. So these are the residential blocks. I will probably draw this um, this whole area here with thinner lines, but I mean to make it easier for you guys to see uh, in this video, I use thicker lines. There is a truck that is parked here. So that's the truck. The bottom of the truck is uh, black because of the shadow. And this line here, that is the boundary of this building. So this boundary line, this line will go to the vanishing point as well. So make sure to get the angle right. And there are some styrofoam boxes here that overlap this building here. So it's good to have overlapping elements. And yeah, I think this is pretty much the sketch. Oh, I forgot about the vegetable stores in the far background. All right. For the vegetable stores in the far background, uh, because actually those stores are not open, but they are in the background. So I'm going to draw those stores with very thin lines like this. These are the vertical, sorry, horizontal lines that represent the tables. And for the lines, the base of the tables, make sure they go to the vanishing point. You can also add some details if there are actually uh, stores that are open. So this sketch is almost complete. So this is how I would sketch something like this. Now this horizontal lines, these are actually quite challenging because there are a lot of horizontal lines and as the lines move further and further into the background, those lines will become uh, closer and closer. Here I'm actually just, um, I'm just drawing, um, not really paying attention to how accurate it is. I'm just trying to recreate the idea that, re I'm just trying to recreate the illusion that these lines here are closer. So you don't really have to draw like accurately. Sometimes you can just draw, oops, this structure. You see this structure here? I cannot talk and draw at the same time. So there is actually this thing here and these pillars should actually start here rather than going all the way to the top. So observation skills is very important, more important actually sometimes compared to um, drawing skills technique. All right now let's um, paint this. I'm just going to use black and white. Um, this is going to be a tonal study. So here I have with me a gray color uh, Pentel color brush, which I'm going to use to paint this area here. So this is just a very quick um, tonal study. I will paint the roofs, but I will not paint the side of the building. The trees in the background. So the black is for the shadows, the dark shadows. 
It's also to create contrast. Background. Some of these pillars are gray, so I need the pillars to be gray. Here. The side that is not facing the light, it will be gray. Oops. So this part here, I colored it wrong. So that's how I would approach a sketch like this straight to ink without using any pencil. Now if you find this scene to be very challenging, um, you can try to draw small. You can draw small to warm up first before you go in like big on your actual sketchbook. By the way, I have another video of me going around the neighborhood looking for places to draw and I drew this. So this video that you're watching, it may be published before or after I publish that video. Anyway, if you want to watch that video as well, you can check out the link in the video description below. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you guys in the next video. Bye.